also want to talk about is around motivation. A lot of my friends who were talking about this feels like recently they're losing some of the motivation because there's a lot of unknown. They feel like they just can't get self really motivated, and energetic to work. How do you deal with this kind of situation where you're not feeling motivated as usual? Yeah, I think it's also a very normal reaction. Even for, especially for those people who were not laid off. And just after all this happened, I think what we see most people is this loss of security, mm -hmm. sense of insecurity in their emotions. When we don't feel secure, how can we like expect ourselves to work exactly the same as before? Work so hard, not thinking about other people. We work hard because we know there are some security, there's some hope, there's something to look forward to, either promotion or other things, right? So I want to encourage people to remember this is a special time. If you don't feel secure, if you lost motivation, it's okay. And it's possibly going to be temporary as well. Because remember, lose motivation right now does not mean you lose the ability to do your work does not mean you, you lose the knowledge and the skill you have to ac accomplish what you want to accomplish. So you're still you, you still have the core skills and knowledge inside of yourself. It's just right now, we may not be able to let those out, may not be able to let them work. So this is a time possibly a signal. I think low motivation, possibly a signal to tell us we possibly need to do more self-care. We may need to use this time to shift away from work a little bit. If we don't have motivation, don't push ourselves. Like, I would say there how I can increase my motivation right here, right now. What's magical method my therapist can give me? Nothing <laughs> magical, right? So think about Tai Chi. It's like you step back to borrow the power, then you are more powerful to push it back and to hit. I don't know whether that's a too complicated philosophy. For <laughs> but basically borrow the big hit, you are hit, and borrow the power, then make yourself stronger. Then you can hit back stronger. So the, I think if, we get this low motivation. Maybe the answer is not to keep on push our for ourselves further forward. It's possibly a time to step backward a little bit. Does hmm. not mean that I'm gonna give up everything. I'm done. It just yeah, yeah, yeah. Back a little bit. Look at our lives overall to see what's different, what is disappointing, and rebuild a sense of security. Rebuild something we feel like we can control and mm. slowly. So that's part of self-care, part of the bird view, big picture, right? Jump out of the details and see the big picture, rebuild what we are looking forward to in our work, in our life. And I think this journey, this self-care process will slowly generate more motivation for ourselves. And then we are able to push forward more. I see. What are some of the good self-care tips? Yeah. A lot of people, when we talk about self-care, <laughs> people have different opinions or even biased towards self-care. People feel like, huh, self-care means you just be selfish and or self-care means you do nothing mm -hmm. and you do fun stuff no matter what other responsibilities you have in life. I don't think so. I think self-care can be anything, even very simple, like five minutes per day, you have some time for yourself. If you, you are someone with children and very busy or have lots going on in your mind, in your life right now, you feel like you don't have any time for yourself, then carve out five to 10 minutes just for yourself. Do something really enjoyable for yourself. That would be self-care. It could be anything. Reading, stretching, yoga, walking. For some people, you'll be surprised. Even listen to music. They forgot about mm -hmm. that for a long time, right? Some easy stuff used to make them happy. But because of the stress, they haven't been done that for a while. Then, just possibly 
so-called self-care is the moment, is the signal to cue you. You can re-pick up some of the stuff and try them again. Don't expect you're going to feel great right after. You may not even feel as good about it as before when you enjoyed it. And that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Because the stress level is high, then it's going to impact our happiness level. That's okay. So basically, what, again, for going inside of ourselves, what we need, what we think going to soothe ourselves, going to help ourselves, and what is enjoyable for ourselves. And then that possibly can really help you. I like for this kind of laid off situation, I always want to encourage those people to see whether this could be an opportunity for you, right? As Chinese, the risk means the risk and opportunity. Wei <laughs> and Ji. I think no matter you are someone just got laid off, unfortunately, or you are someone stayed at your job, you can all in your mind shift this to see whether this could be an opportunity for myself. I think that's a different type of self-healing or self-care. The cognitive part, can you change your self-talk? For example, mm. you can laid off. I'm really upset, right? I definitely hear different stories so far from different people. Some people feel like this is surprising or this is not such a good news. But at the same time, I've actually been struggling with this job. I'm being burned out for a while. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is an opportunity for myself to really drop everything, to take some break, to relax a little bit and try to heal myself a little bit, right? to really focus on my own um, healing journey. And for some people, it may be an opportunity. Finally, I always want to change the job, but I stuck with this security. I stuck with all this package and or my family member don't want me to quit. And this, now I'm laid out. Maybe this opportunity for me eventually can explore other opportunities out there to mm -hmm. see what else I'm capable of doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's push you. You have to make changes. You have to transform in your life, in a way. And I see. people who are not laid off, you can say it is opportunity for you to think differently in this workspace. And can you take more responsibility? Can you try different directions? Is there more room for projects within the company? Because now suddenly everything's changing. And do you have some opportunities you like to pursue? I see. That's really helpful. I, I want to have a follow up on that. Because one thing I was having a conversation with a lot of friends this past weekend, it sounds like there's a sense of lack of direction. Especially right now, even Meta start laying off. People don't really know what's next. What is the future of some of the tech companies? There is a sense of lack of direction, maybe lack of hope. So how do you really find hope? And miss, you don't really know what the future direction is going to be. That's a very good question. I think hope come with, come from ourselves, from within, not <laughs> from outside. I think most people been leaving under external standard for so what is a good life or oh, have so-called a good job, which should pay a uh, mm. house, good car, all those means I have a good life. But when I meet a lot of clients, I ask them, do you like yourself? If you don't have any of those, who well, you are, right? Mm. And you accept yourself. Uh, and a lot of people cannot. They only know who they are in other people's so I feel like right now in this kind of situation, outside is unpredictable, uncontrollable, similar to the beginning of pandemic. We don't know what's going on, right? We don't know where the future is going to be, but we still have a lot of things within we could do. In our lives, there's still going to be something is controllable. So I would encourage people to find out what I really like, what I'm capable of doing, what I can do or try or do more. Because eventually your own knowledge, skill, personality, coping strategies, those are yourselves. Nobody gonna take those away. So I think hope if we want to put in the practical methods, partially is how much you are prepared for unpredictable future. So hmm. 
this need us to have something called preventive pessimistic. So basically, we won't be a little bit pessimistic, but in a way to prepare for the worst. Not overly worry about it and dwell on it, but we can prepare for it a little bit. Just in case my own company gonna have something or my next company gonna lay off or something, how can I make sure I have some, for example, e emergency fund, I have mm -hmm. some, at least to make sure I'm surviving, right? I can be alive. That's the basic. And then uh, some other stuff, what is important to you? What are some backup plans you may need to start preparing and put aside for now? For example, if you have like visa situation, right? So what are some other backup plans? Uh, do you need to go back to school for another degree or what, what other better plan do you need to start preparing just in case? So I think once you prepare somewhat, even the basic level, we will feel a little bit sense of security. And that helps, helpful for the hope because over the past mm. 10 years, 10 ish years, I came to America 2007 and then 2008 hit, right? Oh. Everything goes down. But then, Life got better and better for most people. So yeah. we look at history, it's always down and up, down and up. So it, even though we feel hopeless, but it's hard to predict, say, oh, this is going to be like this forever. You will never find a good job. If there's no meta, there's going to be another nice company coming out. It's going to be placed in the future, maybe a new company we, we just never heard of. So that is possible. So look. As a past experience, that can give us some hope also. And at the same time, try to manage what you can control. If learning a little bit of knowledge or learning another skill, like professional skill, you think is going to be helpful to you to make you feel more resilient over <laughs> the, right? Again, sense of security. Then you can devote some time to do that. Or trying a new direction of project if you think that could make you more competitive in the, on the job market in the future. And you, if you have time and energy, that's something can be a short-term plan for you too. So hmm. I think it's really hope is something we did not realize. Hope is something we can generate for ourselves. It's hmm. not depends on, fully depends on what the environment is. Environment does not give us hope necessarily. We are the one give ourselves hope. How do you handle the situation where, let's say, oh, I'm going to be promoted this year, but then now the company's laying off. Sounds like I'm not going to be able to meet the expectations that I set for myself. So how do you handle the situation where you have a direction, but currently where you're behaving is not matching the sense of direction that you have expectation for yourself? Reset the expectation. Yes. Okay. Reset that. It won't change your own expectation. You may cause in yourself a lot of emotional turbulence because you are, we are really against some environmental factors, right? If it's because the laid off, because there's some uh, like company structure change and we are not sure, then you won't be flexible, at least flexible about the expectation. That's one thing. The second thing I think is very important is to practice appreciation. Okay. We cannot only look for forward, the future. We need to look at right now what I have, what I'm appreciative of, not only the future, what I don't have that I really want. And I want it by this time. Right. Now I cannot have it by this time. What should I do? So I think it's very important, especially in this kind of environmental situation, we have to learn how to stay at the present moment and appreciate why I am, what I have achieved, what I have done, what I have coped with, and try to appreciate yourself every single day and be flexible about at least the timeline of your goal. 
I think it's good to be ambitious. I want to be promoted. I want to go up the career ladder. Sure. But when things uncontrollable happening around you, you're going to have to learn how to adjust your own expectations of the timeline. And that's okay because not reaching the timeline due to these external factors does not mean you are a failure. And by no appreciating yourself more and you won't feel you are a failure easily, right? You will eventually we hope people can reach this point that I did not meet my own goal for myself. Right. And at the same time, I realize the advantage of myself and the things I appreciate. Myself. That's what a lot of time, what we do in therapy is during a lot of psychotherapy to help people achieve. Because in Bay Area, to be honest, people really tend to set up too high a goal. That's <laughs> everyone. Yeah. At least most people come to see a therapist are high achievers have some kind of tendency of perfectionism or a lot of imposter syndrome. Right, right. We just, overall, people don't feel good about ourselves. We keep on setting up higher and higher goal and it's really hard and challenging. We try to achieve it and then we can approve to everyone else and approve to ourselves that I'm good, I'm capable, I'm, I'm deserving good things in life and deserve to be happy. But the reality is most people like this, even they achieve the goal at the timeline, they don't feel really happy. Also be happy for five minutes. That's it. And then next goal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I feel like the layoff hopefully can be a warning sign for us all that what is missing? We achieve so much at work and at life. We are not happy. We somehow lost ability to feel happy. That's really, that's really interesting. What do you think about from a like nutrition standpoint? Is there anything maybe we should eat more or mm -hmm. that can make us feel more calm and relaxed? We possibly should avoid a certain food. If we are not sleeping well, if we are losing sleep, we actually start craving really unhealthy food. Like mm. carbs, like fat, like high sugar, right? So if we lose sleep, actually we crave more unhealthy food. We tend to eat more and we tend to gain weight. <laughs> and all this leads to even worse sleep because our body has to digest all this and oh. eventually you, you build a lot of unhealthy stuff in your body. If you don't have enough activities, then a lot of things in your house you know, goes bad. So I would say if we are stressed out, Try to be mindful about what your body really wants to eat. It, it's not like you don't allow yourself to eat unhealthy, so-called unhealthy food at all. I know sometimes when we are stressed out like myself, I sometimes just crave fried chicken. I know it's not healthy. It's like oily. It's overly fried. But once in a while, if it's, it helps you reduce your stress, it's possibly okay, but you have to watch yourself. You don't want to eat this kind of stress release food every single day, every single meal, a lot. So of course, what is more healthy, I'm sure a lot of nutritionists uh, can give us more like detailed answer, but overall green roots or vegetable definitely can be helpful. I interviewed some nutritionists before. They actually suggest us can buy those frozen vegetables or frozen oh. fruit because when they are frozen, they actually can preserve a lot of nutrition. If oh. we buy them, put them in the fridge, and if we are too depressed, we don't have energy to cook, they, they may go bad, right? When they really want to oh. eat, when we want to eat, we don't have anything to, to eat or take out. We may order a lot of uh, takeout food. Those are very likely to be unhealthy because a lot of restaurants, they may not use the uh, best oil, best cooking right. material. And uh, for profit, it may not be as good as what you get from home. So maybe some uh, frozen, this kind of healthy type of food and certain protein, you definitely want basically just balance. You want to eat consistently when we are don't. When we don't feel good, we tend to skip a meal or overeat. 
meat or under eat. If you have family member, that can be great. Try to eat regularly and monitor each meal, the amount you are eating. Even if you don't have appetite, still try to eat something, right? But don't overeat and try to be as balanced in each meal as possible. At least throughout the day, you want to have all this vitamins and proteins, all, all these things together somehow in your system, ideally. I see. That's super helpful. What are some of the books that you recommend people to read at this stage? First, I don't think at this stage anyone will be able to calm down to read a book. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you and your friend who <laughs> stay at home saying, I'm really stressed out right now. Let, let, let me read this book. <laughs> I, I doubt that, but yes, yes there, there are definitely books I can recommend. I think easy read possibly depends what people want. Two books I really like personally. One is called The Happiness Trap. It's a lot of uh, strategies in the book, a lot of exercise we can practice how to deal with stress that and that are uncontrollable and how to separate the thoughts, the worries really bother us that we feel like we cannot control. There are a lot of psychological strategies and practice you can use to deal with these thoughts, to deal with this uncontrollable external situation. So I think that, and it's an easy read. So I think that's one resource. The other one is along the line of appreciation exercise I talk about. It's like how we can appreciate ourselves more, right? Why? Because we want to achieve happiness or we want to feel happier. But right now, nobody think about happier. I just hope I can feel less stress, right? Yeah, right. Happiness is. But you'll be surprised. Appreciate yourself and try to pick up little happy moments mm -hmm. where it actually is very important to to help you cope with stress. So the other book being on the market for a while, very classic called uh, The Authentic Happiness. Yeah. Peter Sligman. So it's really talk about the science behind happiness and a lot of exercise you can do. Again, <laughs> I like practical both. So some practice, it tell you what to do. All the questionnaires you can fill out to help you really rethink about your own life, your work, your relationship, how can they generate happiness to you? And what are some barriers to the happiness? What you've been doing possibly get yourself stuck. This is really helpful. What will be your tip for everybody? First, thanks everyone takes the time to listen. Just want to give everyone hope at the end to remind you hope is there and resources are there. So if you're struggling, and the yourself has the strength inside of yourself. So if you ever feel like that's too hard to get through this challenging time, go find some professional help. There are a lot of professional helps in every single city. And they are well-trained therapists, psychologists, psychiatrists, or even life coach, right? There are a lot of great helpers out there. And don't, you don't have to go through this all by yourself. You don't have to carry everything on your own shoulder. If you need to find help, just go to get it. There's nothing to be shameful about it. Everyone, when they went through a tough time, they seek help. A lot of therapists, they sought help themselves too, when they went through some personal life challenges. So I hope just whoever listening, we will have some kind of open mind to, to accept help, to be willing to use whatever resource to help yourself get through this. Thank you so much, Rishan. I personally find a lot of value too, because I've been really stressed lately. So this is definitely helping me. I'm pretty sure the audience will love it too. Thank you so much. And we'll, in, we'll include the link to your course as well. So it, in case anybody's interested, we'll have that in the comment below as well. Thank you so much, Ishan, for the help. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you for inviting me.